Welcome back to Ubad's lab and today we're going to be looking into the minimum radius needed so that a pilot inside of a jet that's diving down in circular motion uh, doesn't pass out. Alright, so I've got a little diagram drawn over here. So we can see that this is the jet that's going down and it's gonna dive, hit this low point and go up. So we're gonna assume that it's in circular motion. So it's gonna, if it were to continue, it would complete a whole circle. So the point that we're interested in is this low point right here at the bottom. That's when the pilot will be experiencing the most G's, the most uh, acceleration, um, uh, because um, that's when it maxes out right at the bottom. It's gonna have the most normal force at this point. We're gonna be looking at, uh, at that in a little bit. So if this object were to continue, um, and what we're really gonna be focused on is the little guy in here, our pilot. He's going to be in there. Um, so if this were to continue uh, and he did not have the plane to support him up, he would continue this way tan tangentially uh, because there's no normal force that's keeping him in moving in the radial direction. So that's going to be important to understand in a little bit. And then we're also giving that the max G's that he can handle before passing out is 9 G's. Um, so this is the acceleration, this is the max acceleration that he can um, uh, experience, the max, uh, the max force that he can experience. So let's, uh, let's draw a free body diagram for this point right here to understand uh, the forces that are acting upon our pilot. So we have a, uh, obviously we have gravity, which is just mg and we're gonna do everything in terms of variables today because I always say I like my variables and up we got a normal force which is provided by the plane that's that's um that's going up so it's kind of like um it's kind of like when you're on an elevator you can feel uh, it the force picking up on you uh, just imagine yourself in a plane going down and and you're at this low point you're gonna feel the seat pushing back up on you that's the normal force F N for normal force all right so now let's sum the forces uh, in the radial direction which is right here or probably should have labeled that because um that's what we're trying to find we're trying to find this minimum radius so that uh the person does not pass out so f r is equal to m a r uh let's look at our forces we have f n which is pointing in the radial direction so we have f n and then it's going to be minus mg because that's in the opposite of the radial direction. So minus mg. And that equals m. And acceleration in the radial direction is always v squared over r. All right. Let's move our mg to this side. So we have just our uh, fn. And uh, let, let's, uh, let's get rid of this Fn. So this is a crucial point for this problem. What is this Fn at the bottom? It's actually going to be this, these nine Gs of, uh, of acceleration. So at this point, what's providing this, uh, this acceleration, it's going to be accelerating, um, this way upward because it's going down right it's moving down but it's slowing down that in that direction it's kind of uh, uh coming to a um the forces acting in that opposite direction so uh that is what's going to be the main 
G's, the main acceleration, that's going to be acting on our guy right there. That's going to make him pass out. So this normal force is actually the 9 G's. So it's going to be 9 mg actually because uh, uh, we're going to be multiplying by the force of uh, gravity. So 9 mg is equal to mg plus m v squared over r. Now, all right, we see something cool here. m m m. Boom, boom, boom. We can cross all that out. And now, I mean, uh, so what, what's really interesting here is that we saw all these m's cancel out. So for someone to pass out, the minimum radius needed for uh, someone to not pass out uh, in a fighter jet is actually not dependent on their mass. It's not dependent on their weight. We're only looking at the radius and the speed at which it's traveling. And obviously G is a constant 9.8 acceleration of gravity. So uh, I guess when they have these requirements for the weight of people in um, um, to, to fly fighter jets for the uh, Air Force, uh, the, that weight requirement is probably only so that they can fit in the plane. It really does not have to do with anything of uh, the forces that they can handle um, uh, and the forces that they're going to be um, uh, experience this this acceleration that they're going to experiencing it actually does not play a role interestingly so we have this 9g is equal to g plus v squared over r all right so let's subtract g over here uh, to the other side, and we get 8g is equal to v squared over r. And we want to find this minimum acceleration, so let's multiply r to this side and then divide by 8g. So let's write this right here because this is going to be our final answer. r is equal to v squared over 8g. That's our answer right there. That is the minimum radius needed for this jet when it's diving in circular motion so that the person does not pass out. So let's try to understand why that's the minimum radius. So let's look back at uh, one of the equations we have here. Yep, let's look at this one. So this is the acceleration, the G's that it's going to be, the pilot's going to be experiencing. Let's look at if we uh, increase R, this number is going to increase. So therefore, the G's, uh, wait, no. If we increase R, R is in the denominator, right? So increasing R would make this number smaller, right? So in turn, that would make this, the G's, it just being summed, smaller. So it's gonna be, he's gonna be experiencing less of uh, acceleration uh, with a larger radius. So we just found the, um, the minimum radius needed so that, it, um, so that he can not pass out. So again, let's look at if we decreased R, this value would increase since it's the denominator. So then de having a smaller r would mean even more uh, g's experienced.